Hi guys, how are you? Hey. Hi Tatiana, hey, Tatiana. Nice, to nice, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm so excited for Encanto. I love everything that I have seen thus far and I cannot wait to see more. Um, so my first question is just how did the concept first come about uh, in terms of your role in the project and what were the first steps you took to prepare yourself for the film. Yvette, if you'd like to go first. Sure. So uh, Byron and Jared really wanted to collaborate and tell this story about family. And so they actually have been working on it for about five years uh, in our development department. And uh, from the very beginning, they wanted to tell the story about family based somewhere in Latin America. And, you know, when uh, through research that they do while in development, uh, they went on their research trip and they really started focusing in on Colombia. Uh, I became involved in the film probably about three years ago uh, when I came on and uh, I was in the studio at the time. So I was always very curious about what they were talking about. You know, uh, you hear, oh, I think they're working on something in Latin America. So I'd be like knocked by, I was like, hey, what's going on? <laughs> Trying to get any information that I can. And so I was so grateful when I had the opportunity to actually work on the project. Um, and so coming onto the project, you know, they transition out of development and we really kind of start focusing on on the store, uh, you know, more so on the story. And really we start our whole screening process and start designing the world in which, uh, in which we want to build. Well, that's wonderful. And how far into it did you come on, Clark? Well, then I came in on, on about the same time. What's interesting is I had come off of Zootopia where I'd worked with Byron and Jared. And I said to them at the end of the film, I really hope we get to work together again. When the directors go into development, Jared went on to Moana and Byron went into development and they were starting to talk about it. I jumped on to produce a movie, Ralph Breaks the Internet. So I was busy on that project. And when I kept always saying sort of like a vet, hey, don't forget, I'd love to be a part of whatever your next project is. And I remember one day when they pitched the idea, say, we're going to tell the story about a large extended family where everyone has some magical gift, a magical power. They didn't know what those were going to be. Everyone but one. I was in because I love the emotional side of that. I, I was like, well, I'm already love this character who didn't have a name at the time, but I know I love this character because I'm already wondering why. Why doesn't she have this and everyone else does? And who is she? And I, I want to go on that journey. So I I a little bit like Yvette was sort of saying, hey, I'd love to be a part of this project. And then obviously when Lynn was a part of it and all of those things came in, it was I sort of started to say, I don't care whether you want me to be a part of it or not. I'm going to be a part of this project. I need to be a part of it. And that's when Yvette and I about three years ago came on together, which was awesome. I love that. I especially love, um, you know, because the chosen one is such uh, an infamous trope, if you will. And of course, who does not love that trope? And now we have an interesting subversion that you don't often see, which is like the not chosen one. <laughs> <Exactly>. um, <laughs> so I think that is great. Um, but as a Latina myself, I love how specific it feels so far. It really does feel like that research trip to Colombia brought so much um, authentic options into the story, and especially the like racial diversity of the family themselves, because that's something that's often overlooked in the Latino community. So I was wondering uh, how much effort or conscious choice it was to approach it as specific as possible, as opposed to making it like magic realism wonderland, if you will. Well, I think, uh, you know, when Byron and Jared and Lynn, they all went down to Colombia, one of the things that they they came back and talking about was really the great diversity within within uh, the country, right? And whether it's the people or the, the biodiversity, everything was, there's so many different parts of Colombia that are beautiful, but also very different from each other. Um, and one, one of the things they also did early on was really kind of, uh, gathered the Latinx employees within the studio together. We, we formed this group called the Familia Group and we would get together once a month over lunch, just really talking about our families. And it was a great way for us uh, who didn't, who never uh, really come together in that way to talk and share our stories about our families. And we were all from different, different backgrounds, but there were some commonalities and some, you know, we would laugh and we would cry and talk about all these great things. But one of the things about that came from, you know, from all of that was the differences in all of our families. I, you know, my grandparents are all from Mexico and so I'm Mexican American, uh, but I have cousins, first cousins who have red hair and blue eyes. And, you know, we don't question, you know, whether they're Mexican or not, they just are. And so really showing that diversity, you know, we, from the very start, Byron and Jared really wanted to build this family as a true family really is diverse and different uh, yet 
all living under one roof. Oh, I love that so much. Um, Clark, I know you guys mentioned uh, Lemon and Miranda, obviously, and his music is so iconic. Um, you hear a song, you're like, mm, I feel like Lynn had something to do with this. Um, so what would you say that his style brings to the story and uh, collaboration with Jermaine Franco? I think, you know, th there's two things. One is, I think what he's done a brilliant job of is figuring out how does he be inspired by Colombian music mm -hmm. as he thinks about writing these songs. And that includes instrumentation, right? Percussion, accordion, harp, instrumentation that is at the T play, instrumentation that comes from that region, being inspired by that and bringing and weaving that through the songs. But what makes it so uniquely Lynn is not just the musicality of it, but the lyrics. He is just a genius when it comes to lyrics and being able to give you the earworm that you are gonna have so you can't lose the song in your head in any way, shape or form, but also propel the story forward, right? Song, songs in a film need to feel like the story has moved forward. It can't just be, we're gonna stop and here's a great song, wasn't that fabulous? And now the story picks back up. It has to actually take you on a journey and given all of his you know, um, experience on Broadway and things, he knows it so deeply and so well. So all of the songs do that. And I think the thing that is gonna, at least it blows my mind away, and I hope it blows the audience's mind away, and you saw two pieces of it, which is he does these huge numbers. We don't know, we, have, we usually have one or two huge numbers in a Disney animated film, but there are many in this film because of that. When you look at a song like We Don't Talk About Bruno, which is a huge ensemble number. Um, it, it is so fantastic. And there's so much more of that in the film that I think people are gonna be super excited to see. I cannot wait. I have already, I love that one. And also the introduction song, La Familia yeah. Madrigal, I assume. Yep. So, so, so much fun. Um, <laughs> now, Yvette, uh, obviously there's an entire incredible cast. We just talk about every single one of them because they're all amazing. But uh, Stephanie Beatriz is, is, her range is insane to me. Literally blows my mind every time. I can't believe it's the same woman. But what uh, qualities did she bring to Mirabel that made her right for the role? So uh, when we first met Stephanie, we actually, you know, she came in, we knew her from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. I didn't know any much beyond that. And I knew her character Rosa, where she is a very serious, very non-funny, non com like, it, there's comedy in her way, but the character itself. And so uh, when she came in, we were so like surprised, so pleasantly surprised by her, her natural voice and her personality and how much she brought even, you know, even over Zoom, you know, how much that of her personality just kind of jumped through the screen. And then she sang and we were like, where did that come from? And it was just amazing. And from the very beginning, she was, she was the, the one, you know, she was Mirabel and she has brought so much of her, you know, really her vulnerability to it. And then she is so vulnerable in these sessions and then yet making us crack up in the next session by her improv. And she brought <laughs> so much to this character. Uh -huh. There really is no one else in my mind, it is her. Oh, I cannot wait to see the rest of her performance. Um, Clark, finally. Is there a member of La Familia Madrigal that you most relate to or whose gift you would like to take for yourself? Oh, well, the, the character I might relate to or who I've always loved from the beginning is Antonio. And I think it's one of the first scenes that went into production. I think you saw it with the two of them, Mirabel and Antonio, under the bed. I've always loved this character. And he's an introvert. And, you know, as much as our jobs for, as producers require us to be extroverts, it's not really <laughs> who I am. Internally, I'm an introvert. So I really relate to him trying to figure out how do I come out of uh, my shell. And for him, it's talking to animals. For me, it's work, right? Work forces me out of my shell. If I didn't have work, I'd be very introverted and, and <laughs> siloed. So I think in some ways, he's the character that I kind of most relate to. Who wouldn't want to be Camila, where you could change into whatever you want to? So if I got to pick something, I'd be like, oh, well, every day I could be somebody different. That might help. But uh, Antonio's a character I relate to. I love that. Well, thank you both so much. I cannot wait to see the final product. Ah, thank, <laughs> thank you so much. Have a great day. Nice, meeting, nice you. to meet you.